Thank you, Andrew. Can you guys hear me OK? I have to say that I didn't do an in-person conference presentation for a long time. Last time I was, I think the last one conference I was in, I was, I believe it was either the revenue management conference in Stanford or the informed conference. But I don't think I gave a talk in those conferences. So I, I really have difficulty figuring out when was the last time. So it's, it's good to finally have a chance to talk about some of the work we do. And uh, this is joint work with two co-authors. Uh, Xiao is a um, professor at the Concordia University in Montreal, Canada. And uh, Gloria is a colleague in the operations management group at CEO Boulder, the School of Business. And I'm talking about something that is very familiar to most of you, uh, that is cancellations in the hotel industry. And we all know, right, in the hotel industry, it seems, right, we all, almost always observe quite generous cancellation policies, right? There are hotels that allows you to cancel by 6 p.m. local time on the day of arrival. That is generous, but you know, it's very typical those days for hotels to offer, to let you cancel 24 hours in advance, right? I think a lot of hotels actually do that. And that, of course, is, causes issues for hotels. And there are some, there are lots of statistics you can collect. That you can, we also see that from the data we have. Uh, this is some statistics from this, uh, this website called mirai.com. They actually studied, you know, cancellation behavior for uh, hotel customers, and they figured out that, right, the range is between something like 20 to 40 percent. Well, even though, as you can see here, that the cancellation actually differs quite a bit by channel. Like in the web channel, it's 19 percent on average, and in bookings.com, it's like 39 percent. And this causes headache for hotel companies, as you can imagine. Uh, of course, right, this, is, this does not escape, escape the attention of people right, that study hotel revenue management and pricing. And there are not of literature uh, on this behavior. However, that if you look at the literature closely, you notice that most of the time when people think about the cancellations, they believe that it is driven by exogenous factors, right? It's the channel, right, as I just talked about. It's the customer segment. It's seasonality. So there are a lot of literature, but, right, we actually suspect that there is an element that is missing from the literature, and this is actually confirmed in our study. That is, there are endogenous factors that are driving cancellation, and the prime suspect is a variable that we're extremely interested in, that is pricing. And we believe that price is a great candidate that, that it can be an endogenous factor that affects cancellation behavior. Actually, we see some anecdotal evidence of that. For example, that it's well known that advanced group blocks are more prone to cancellation because what people do is that, well, you know, when they have this block of room that had a lower rate, they tend to lock in those lower rates and then cancel later. So we would like to study the following research question. And we would like to understand how the booking prices at the time of the reservation influence the cancellation rate. And also, of course, right, eventually, right, we want to understand you know, from hotel's perspective, what is the potential revenue impact right, if the hotel managers actually ignore this aspect? So the data we are working on is from a, a, like a business-oriented hotel in a major city in, in the United States. And here are some summary statistics. Uh, basically, uh, I, we got you know, booking data for a, 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 about you know, one and a half years. Uh, and this hotel is a little bit, it's a, so, somewhat typical in the sense that it uses a lot of booking channels. Uh, in particular, it uses 25, we see 25 booking channels in the data set. And uh, this hotel has 16 uh, room types. And uh, the, in the data set, we also have some information about customer segments. We do not have detailed demo demographic information about customers, but we do have uh, this customer segmentation information. And uh, 
Notice here that for this particular hotel, right, con con consolation behavior is also quite prevalent. In fact, right, out of those uh, roughly 120,000 booking records, there are more than 28,000 that got canceled. The consolation rate is more than 20%. Yes? Yes. It does not show up in the data, unfortunately, so we do not have a trace of changes that was made in the data set. Uh, we did talk to the hotel management about this. They told us that they believe that this, this idea of changing the reservation, of course there are some of those, but it's not prevalent. But we do not have trace of that in our data, so we cannot. So part of this 23% could be changed? No, if it's changed, it will not be it will not be recorded as canceled, right? It, it, it just, right, it's just, it's just another reservation, it's just a reservation record, the timestamp changes and the, you know, the, the arrival dates or, you know, departure dates changed. But, it, but we do not know whether that's a changed record though. We do not have that in the data set. But that's not a canceled uh, booking though. <clears throat> okay. So, well, <laughs> This is some model-free evidence. So this graph shows right, the consolation rates at a different booking price. This booking, booking, by booking price, I mean the average likely rate. Okay. As you can see here, right, as the price increases, the consolation rate actually increases substantially. Well, if the average price nightly rate is about 100, it's only about you know, 20%, but at a higher rate, it could, you know, the consolation rate could reach like 40 to 5, 50%. So if you look at the data this way, right, it gives you some indication that there is certainly a correlation between the prices and the consolation behavior. And what we're trying to do is to understand you know, this relationship, to, you know, to drill down and understand you know, whether there is causal impact in some sense. Right? Because if you look at a graph like this, what is your immediate reaction? Right? So at higher booking prices, consolation rates are higher. Right? It could be explained by a host of different factors. It could be. right. People who book more expensive room types cancel more often, right? Which could drive this behavior. It could be that people who book through more expensive channels, right, cancel more often. So there are lots of possible explanations for you know, what, we, what we observe here. So the question we're trying to answer is whether, you know, we're trying to tease out whether there is some causal impact of pricing on cancellation. So our empirical model is actually a hazard model. So we are relating the booking prices and the hazard of cancellation. And our main model actually uses exponential distribution for one very good reason. It's more parsimonious, right? Exponential distribution can be specified with one parameter, as you all know. But we did do like robustness checks with other distributions and the conclusion holds. And for each booking record, right, we model the time Cancellation, that is the dates from booking date to the cancellation date, as a function of the price of the room per night plus a host of control variables. Okay. And I'm going to show you what are the control variables we use right, in our study. Uh, those are the control variables that we use, like those, those are the euro scenes you can think, think about, like uh, length of stay. The lag, uh, you know, the inventory, the number of guests, you know, in the bookings and and booking channel, room type, and so on and so forth. Okay. And here is the, the result um, of this first attempt of the model. And uh, here we see that the booking price has a positive coefficient. And what does that mean? That basically means that at a higher booking price, the hazard of cancellation increases. And uh, that translates to roughly an increase of 5% of cancellation rate you know, for an increase of $50 in booking price. Okay, so indeed, right, the cancellation could be quite a bit higher for rates that are higher. Okay. And of course, right, 
or th this study, you already, I'm sure that, you know, a lot of questions pop in your head. First of all, right, we are trying to tease out, you know, whether it's the effect is causal, we are trying to control for a host of factors, and that list of factors that could impact this study, right, it goes on and on and on, right, that you can easily, I'm sure, right, you can easily think of, you know, other possible factors, you know, that we did not include in, right, so, that's one, and also like, you know, whether, you know, the exponential distribution is the correct one or, or not, and for that, for those reasons, we actually did a lot of robustness checks. In our study, for example, we used the different parametric assumptions with Weibo, you know, uh, distribution and Gumper's distribution, and we also looked at, you know, different model specifications. And also, right, in order to uh, establish this causal link, right, between the price and consolation, we did what do we call the constant exact matching? So imagine, right, what do we, what do we do there is essentially, right, you know, look at the two booking records, right, in a way, you're trying to find the matching records that have essentially everything, everything else is pretty much the same or similar, except, right, the price is different, okay? That way that we, you know, by doing that, we're trying to figure out, you know, whether, you know, there, if there is a, a causal impact that we can establish, and um, we also looked at, you know, alternative measures of the independent variable where, you know, instead of uh, just putting in the raw booking prices, we created categorical variables to represent the booking pr high versus no booking prices, and uh, our result is quite robust. Okay. And we also did some additional analysis to look at, you know, the behavior over time, um, so what we do there is that we created this additional variable called four that essentially, you know, look at, you know, whether a booking was, we basically did a median split on the, on the lag, essentially like the booking that were done four away versus the booking that are booked, you know, closer to the date of arrival. And uh, the result still is the same. However, we, well, that positive effect of price is still there. But uh, we noticed that this, 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 this variable four that we encoded from the lag information uh, does have some moderating effect. So basically what, what is this coefficient here, you know, this selective coefficient here means that the hazard of cancellation decreases for booking that are down four from the uh, date of arrival. Um, and that interact, we, we, we did two versions of this, right? We, we had a, this second version, that's the last two columns where we included the interactions between this variable four and the booking price. And here we see a positive coefficient. What that means is that, you know, as the booking price increases, the hazard of cancellation for bookings down four from the date of arrival also increases. Okay. So there is that, that, that temper aspect in the model as well. Uh, I didn't uh, pay attention, but yes, uh, what is the uh, question? Uh, can you, do you mind? I can actually read it out loud. Uh, do you have post the prices for each channel for each day? Uh, basically, can you check whether the price for a booking made uh, increases, decreases with time? Uh, for example, I made the booking for $140, the same will be paid $140 a day versus $100. Uh, first case, I can put my book in versus uh, second case, I can cancel. So pretty much whether the uh, price variations is the fact. Over time. Like over time, yes. Yes, we did that analysis too. Uh, our result holds, and uh, that is Albert's question, right? Whether, okay, I'm going to come back to that point later. In fact, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe hold that thought for a little bit. I'll come back to that point. Because that is one potential mechanism we looked at, right, is what is really causing this. That's one possibility is, you know, I made a booking and then I see a lower price either at this focal hotel or at a nearby hotel, right? And that is one possible explanation for this behavior and why this pricing, be, you know, is causal in a, in a way, yeah. Right? That's a very good segue to this slide. 
I forgot that it's actually right the next night. <laughs> I said later, right? Later, right? technically it's correct, but it's actually right the next slide, actually, okay? Right, so what is the potential mechanism? And you know, we think maybe it's, you know, like it's caused by strategic customer behavior, right? Is it because, you know, the overall market price becomes more attractive, you know? Is it because, you know, there's a more attractive offer after you book in, after the booking, you discover a more attractive offer from a competing hotel, right? Um, we have, you know, limited number of data points from competing competitors, but we are able to match those competitor data with about 6,000 bookings, so we have a decent data set to analyze this behavior, and, you know, in order to understand this, what we did is, you know, we, we, we introduced this variable called the difference market. What difference market means is it's the booking price that you, you know, you book the hotel at, minus right, the market price, and in here, the market price, we have two operationalization, and actually to Owunch's question, I, we also looked at you know, just this hotel's own data, but we think it's a bit more comprehensive. We also you know, look at the market price okay, from competitors, and we have two, uh, two different ways to measure the market price. The first one is the maximum across competitors, and the second one is the average across competitors. So basically, this difference market that tells you, right, and if this number is positive, that means after the booking, right, you discover a competing offer at a lower price, okay? And then we did that analysis, and here's the result. So we see a positive coefficient for difference market. So what does that mean? So as the difference right, between the booking price and the market price enlarges, the height of conservation increases. So yes, indeed, right, we found evidence that you know, when there's a bigger gap between the booking price and the market price, uh, the conservation is more likely for people to cancel. And we believe that is an indication that the Customers are strategic at some level, okay. But <laughs> if you look at the coefficient for the price itself, the booking price itself, it still stayed positive. What does that mean? That means that this strategic customer behavior does not fully explain, does not completely explain the positive effect, right, of booking price on the hazard of cancellation. Is that surprising? Uh, I don't know. I mean, on some reflection, I have to tell you that I feel this is not too surprising. Okay. We actually do not fully expect the strategic behavior to fully explain, right? I mean, the impact of price on cancellation. And unfortunately, right, I mean, to collect some of those other data, right, to figure out the exact mechanism is challenging, right? So if you think about it, I mean, we are all customers. I think this is a setup you know, we're all very familiar with, right? If you think about it, uh, well, after the booking, I discover a lower price. That could be one reason, like I'm more likely to cancel. That is one possibility, right? But there are also other possibilities. For example, I'm a skier. Sometimes you know, I found a good deal, right? <laughs> At a ski resort, right, in the ski season, right? When I book the, a deal, right, I'm much less likely to cancel, right? I try to make room in my schedule to make sure I can go and ski and enjoy the lower price, right? I mean, that's not necessarily strategic behavior per se as I, I introduced it before, okay? So you, you book at a, a deal, you're less likely to cancel, okay? There's an alternative mechanism that is not measured by this, you know, difference market variable, okay? And, and, but as I said, right, unfortunately, right, I mean, behavior like that, <laughs> in order to test for those mechanisms, I mean, we need to collect additional data and we, unfortunately do not have those additional data, so we didn't test for all possible mechanisms in there, okay? The, yes, Rad? So do you think this, this sort of uncertainty among the bookings, for example, from our for business trip, so then the person is not quite sensitive. I don't care if I, for example, book a hotel at a very high price, and I'm not gonna cancel because university is not safe. <laughs> Yes, that's certainly one aspect of this. I mean, we try to control for it. We do not, we do not directly observe whether, thank you, uh, a trip is business or not. However, in the, as I mentioned earlier, I didn't talk in detail about it. We do have this variable called a segment. 
So the hotel keep a set, uh, divide customers into seven segments. And I think the second variable actually captures mostly whether it is a business trip or not. So there, we do have that. Sure, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, we could do some subset analysis to see whether that's true or not, because we do know right, the, the statistics for the different segments. Right? We can look into that, I guess. Yeah. And there is another minor related point on this, I should say, is that you, know, you see that a lot of times when we actually do empirical analysis, well, in relevant literature, including the one you know, from Palin earlier, right, we're trying to figure out whether the customers are strategic or not from the data, right? I, we actually, we know that right, in the revenue management literature, there are not already a lot of study where, you know, people try to figure out whether the customers are strategic. And I actually think, you know, the, here, this is not the major point of my paper, but I would like to bring out this point. If you think about the cancellation data, right, it is almost a better, in a way, it's a better data to test for, for strategic behavior because unlike, you know, what, we observe in other setups, we own, you know, in other setups, usually you only see, like, the customer only need, need one mark in your data, right? <laughs> but in the cancellation kind of data set, you actually, they potentially will leave two things in your data, actually. In a way, it's actually easier for you to figure out, you know, this strategic, you know, customer behavior from this data set, even though, as I pointed out, this is not the main thing that for this particular paper that we write. And of course, you know, in the end, right, we actually care about the following things. What is the implication for hotels? I mean, you, you did all this analysis. What, what, why, do, why do we care about this? And in order to answer that question, we actually did an analytical model. I'm going to spare you the technical details of this analytical model, but I'm going to tell you what we did right, with uh, this analytical model. So we have a sing, single firm at right, a hotel right, with fixed capacity, endogenous pricing, and cancellation, and we try to figure out from an you know, analytical setup, what is the impact of ignoring the fact that your cancellation is indulgently driven by prices, okay? So in the correct model, right, your cancellation is price dependent, right, and that impact is causal, okay? And in a misspecified model, right, if you, hotel managers are naive and they do not take, take that into account, they would consider this so-called misspecified model where the cancellation rate is assumed to be exogenous at least to the prices. So your pricing does not really affect the cancellation behavior. And in that case, right, I mean, the dynamics of the system is kind of interesting. When we study this so-called rational equilibrium, what does rational equilibrium tell you? This rational equilibrium is a very interesting concept because what it, what it tells you is that, you know, you observe the data, you try to estimate, make the estimation, and your estimated behavior is consistent with the data you observed. So if you do not think about otherwise, actually you believe you have the correct model, even though it is incorrect, okay? And <laughs> that's very depressing because, you know, if you do not think about this aspect of the problem, you would be completely, completely ignore this. So we compared the result of this correct model versus the misspecified model. And what is the main takeaway from this analysis? The main takeaway from this analysis is that if the firm ignores the impact of pricing on cancellation rate, we can, analytically show that the firm is going to overprice and underbook, actually, okay? So yes, there is an impact, and uh, you might be asking, what is the real impact, right? I mean, there is an impact, and then first we want to know whether there's an impact, and then second, we want to know the magnitude of that impact, and we did some numerical study informed by the real data, and we figured out that this magnitude of the revenue impact could be as high as 5%. And of course, right, perhaps this next point is not too surprising to you. The point is that this impact tends to be the highest when the system node is in the intermediate range. You know, either you, you have a lot of capacity, you have very little capacity relative to demand, it doesn't matter that much, but in the intermediate range, it actually matters a lot. Okay, so in that operating regime, you know, this revenue impact would be quite high. Okay. Yes, right? Well, that's, we, our model only explicitly considers one hotel. 
However, if demand function implicitly takes into account that you know when you price, right? I mean, some customers are going to leave; they're going to choose alternatives outside of your model, right? Yes, yeah, it's price elastic, right? Yes, right. The demand function will reflect those competition, right? <clears throat> it's not a, an explicit competitive model, but still, your demand would re react to the price you charge. So, time is up, and this is my uh, last slide. <laughs> this is my conclusion. Allow me, you know, ten seconds, right? So, yes, right. The main conclusion from our study is that the price is an endogenous factor that contributes to the cancellation rate. And this effect holds even, if, even after you control for customer strategic behavior. And also, the higher, you know, higher booking prices is going to increase the hazard of cancellation for bookings done for from the date of arrival. And also, you know, ignoring this impact is detrimental to the hotels. And there is a potentially large revenue impact. That, that is a takeaway from this. Uh, of course, I'm happy to answer any other questions. <laughs>